Here we are on uh, one of the blocks of Oak Street and we noticed on this block all 12 homes have first floor brick facades and again this house does too. This is a Queen Anne Victorian home and this home happens to be the home of the daughter of James Newton. James Newton was the richest man in the history of Hoyle. He founded, ran, or constructed, or financed about 40 mills around Hoyoke with his brothers. Four brothers, Newtons, came to Hoyoke and did a lot. And his daughter lived here, her name is Eliza Noon. She lived to 96 years old, but her daughter outdid her and lived to 101 years old. <laughs> so it's incredible. So notice how beautiful these homes are, especially at the northern end of this, of this little block here. So we're gonna go to the next house. Okay, and the house right at the southwest corner of this intersection is the Montague House. You can see it very beautiful in the upper details. Probably also should be called a shingle, definitely a shingle style Victorian home. Look at the beautiful colors. They, they're using four different colors. So this one is the only house on the street that could be called a painted lady. Painted lady is when you use at least three different colors in the Victorian style. But it's a very beautiful house. Also in the street, notice that there's no utilities and they're all in the back alleyways, which is a great plus in Hoyle because you can have all utility vehicles down there, including the, the plumbing, electricity, <clears throat> and the water coming in from the back, which is great. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go out to the care center. Have to go the same way. All right, now on this care center, there's a lot to talk about. Now, if you look very carefully, you might be able to see the corner style, size 1911. So in the year 2011, the people that run the care center with the student, with the young people inside of it, went to the corner store, and opened the corner store up, and inside they found a chest filled with mentals from 1911. And they did the gracious thing when they they took the treasures out inside. They put more treasure, and they put it back in place. And that's a wonderful thing because this is some students and some just. Uh, very young people that have become pregnant. Now, what was this? It was, it was three things along the way. First of all, it was a Victorian home, a gorgeous home, that was taken over by Edward and Elizabeth Town. And what they did was, they were business people, they ran a magazine. The magazine was such that it was called, uh, Almost to us would have been called a new age, but it was called back then a new thought. And that was a philosophy where you use Christianity plus basic um, measures of, of life to help a person. So it would tell them how to eat better, how to think better, sleep better. Right? It was maybe uh, would nowadays be called a self-help kind of magazine. All right, now notice on the windows that something unique is happening on the right-hand side. And if you look very carefully on the right-hand side, compared to the left-hand side, the windows are spaced out in a certain way on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, the windows towards close to the middle are with the same sill and transom. 
And so the right side of the building is not the same size as the left side. It's very close, but it's not the same size. So what's going on here? Well, something very peculiar. In 1911, on a, an old Victorian home that was here, and in which the town family was living and working, they had a fire. And they decided to leave the Victorian home in place and just build a brand new building around it. And they'll function both as a house and as a business. And so what they did was they wanted to keep the carriage house in back. And they also wanted to keep the structure of the Victorian home. But they wanted to look this uh, symmetric as they possibly could. And to do that, when they measured everything out and they wanted to keep the back porch, which, which is now still a porch up there, they wanted to keep everything. To do that, you had to put those middle sets of window on the right closer together, right? They had to be closer by maybe a foot and a half or so than the other windows. And then everything fit together. And when you look at this for the first time, you think it's totally symmetric. And if you look at it for thousands of times, you would think it's totally symmetric. The reason why they were so crafty of what they did and that they almost always fool the people that look at it. So what is going on here? Do you understand really what's taking place? Now again, it was a magazine and it was very successful. It started out in the year 1898 in Wisconsin, but in 1899, she, Elizabeth Town, moved here and she got married that year and her husband was quite rich, so she upped the business. So it was her thought to get the magazine going. And it started out in the very early years as a four page magazine coming out once a month. By the height, it was a 120 page magazine every month. And they would print the entire contents of the magazine in this, in this building. So it was a home and a business. And they had lots of workers, in fact, at the height, at the very peak of their subscriptions, 90,000 magazines went out every year, every month. Right? If you multiply by 12, that's a million magazines going out every year. That's an incredible amount of subscriptions. And the height was probably 1930s, maybe 1920s. By the 1940s, it started going downhill. And by 1952, it was such that they had to stop. The reason why people's philosophy towards life was changing up, and so you didn't really, people weren't really reading this magazine kind of magazine. By the next decade, people had got into New Age magazines, and and so the philosophy kept going on. But New Age doesn't have Christianity behind it; it has Buddhism behind it, so it's a little bit different. Uh, so this is a very famous house, again, it's called the Nautilus, and the magazine itself is called the Nautilus. And if you want to find any one of the uh, magazines, they're all on the internet, every one of them, which means about 600 issues that they made. And if you read them, nowadays they're not very interesting because, again, you have, you have a new philosophy of life now. But back then they were very interesting to people because they wanted a better life for themselves. People are starting to get more money and trying to appreciate their Christianity a little bit better. Thank you for coming on this tour.